Hey guys, welcome back to Young Americans Abroad, your best place for weekly content on young American soccer players playing overseas. My name is Austin Van Churn. And my name is Patrick Ferry. And guys, welcome to our show. Well, guys, it's great to be back this week because, Pat, what a busy week it was. Yeah, awesome. The U.S. players, um, you know, should, should put on some great performances, and they showed up and, and turned up this uh, this pack, past week and weekend. So a lot to talk about here. Yeah, we got a lot of goals. Uh, we also had some assists and um, some, some moves too, Pat. You know, we had uh, one big move that we'll talk about a little bit later, but – what a what a great week and uh you know it's game week as well we got a game on uh sunday with the us mt that's right awesome excited for game week we got hyped here and we'll you know obviously cover this uh week report here up until uh you know some national team action again so excited to kind of see uh, our boys there on, on the pitch um you know representing that country but um again we got a lot to talk about like you said um especially an american maestro over in italy with another dazzling goal and all-around performance that's right. And we also have a veteran that made the move finally abroad uh, to England. So we got to cover that. That's right. And uh, an American forward here recalled to his parent club in the championship. So all that and more in this week's episode. All right, guys. And to start off this week's exciting episode, we're going to talk about that American maestro I mentioned here over in Italy, Weston McKinney. Um, so again, we're going to go back in time a little bit to the last Wednesday, the Supercoppa Italia game. I wish they beat Napoli in 2 0, and Weston started, played the full 90, and awesome. That was uh, his first silverware. So, congrats to Weston. And, uh, you know, looking forward to many more trophies here. Yeah, really. And it was, it was so cool just seeing him, you know, with the trophy after the game and, um, you know, just celebrating and finally getting to, uh, to lift something. You know, he, he used to play with Schalke, and they did get to the Champions League, uh, what seems like That's a right. long time ago. Uh, after finishing second in the Bundesliga. But, you know, Pat, there's no trophies for second. So, uh, yeah, it was really cool to see. Cool moment. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's kind of a guy you want, um, you know, from the national team perspective, too, and, and players you're following. Um, anytime, you know, his club or, you know, his team wins something or, you know, a great game or anything like that, he's just a fun person, I think, to be around and, and has some, you know, fun dancing and celebrations. And, and again, really kind of, uh, you know, enjoys the moment enjoys the victory but again you know back to hard work here so again just want to quickly you know cover the game um you know had a really good passing completion rate was involved really active uh, down the channels in the midfield um you know, had a few chances created there and, and uh, a lot of recoveries um you know which he's been great at did have a nervy moment where he gave up a, a penalty i think in the 77th minute to insigne um yeah but again i saw on twitter there um, it was kind of a crazy moment, happened so fast, but uh, I guess the ball doesn't lie, Austin, and uh, you know he he missed that uh, a penalty. So a little basketball reference there, but um, yeah, again, um, you know closed out with a clean sheet there ultimately, and uh, yeah, great to see uh, McKinney get the silverware. But I want to shift over to the most recent uh, game here over the weekend, and uh, again getting back on track in Syria with a two nothing win after uh, you know some of the Milan teams dropped some points here, um, and this was two 0 win against uh, Bologna here. Uh, where Weston started again, played 90 minutes. I think he was subbed out there in stoppage time, but again, scored a you know fantastic goal in the win. So uh, again, I think it was uh, right at the in the kind of towards the uh, the second half there in the 70 something minute, um, you know where he again kind of ghosted um, you know down the down the line there in the channel and and again you know found himself in a great position for a header. Um, you know we've seen him um, with passes with goals just. Um, you know, so athletic and versatile in the air, um, you know, beating his man there in those 50-50 those balls. So nice to see him get a goal. Um, but again, just overall complete performance. And I knew you watched, uh, you know, the game live there, Austin. But every aspect of the game, his energy and movement, um, you know, transitioning from the right side of the pitch to the middle. And, and just, again, any counterattack or, or, you know, attacking moment was just so fluid. And, uh, you know, stems particularly from Weston's just – I guess ability to influence the game and is is uh you know j just everything he did Austin um you know I can't compliment him enough um just commanding the midfield between the lines um you know bringing them forward again getting some of those recoveries and, and halting some possession but um just an all-around flawless performance I think 
Yeah, yeah, and he was man of the match in this game, uh, I believe, according to FootMob. But, you know, watching this game, too, he was really just the engine for, for Juventus on the day. Um, and, and it's funny because there was someone on Twitter a few weeks ago that posted basically – uh, Wes McKinney's gotten so good at just controlling his touches. Um, and, and I thought that was so perfect. And, and this game really just like symbolized that so well, um, you know, in, in this game, literally, it seemed like anytime the ball came to him, he was able to just take it under control right away. Uh, you know, he was able to pass under pressure at the tip of his foot, uh, you know, to get out of that pressure and, and, and advance play up the field. Um, and, and that's just something we've really grown accustomed to seeing seeing happen with Weston at Juventus. Um, um, that's, you know, that next step that he's taken ever since moving there. And yeah, like I said, this game, it just was, was so apparent and uh, yeah, just so cool to see him improve and, and, and come so far uh, from the player, you know, we saw not even a year ago at Chalka um, that was getting there, but, but now he's actually there. And that's, that's the exciting thing. Yeah, it's absolutely unreal just how rapid and fast his development is, Austin. Um, again, you know, Schalke playing so many positions there, and you saw some errant touches and passes, and it just kind of looked a little out of control there, but he's just refined it so well, training day in and day out, and with all these games and, and high-pressure situations with Juventus, I mean, uh, I think it's just been an unreal move, and, and you know, kudos to everyone getting that deal done, and, and again, the, the scouting team at Juventus, and, and seeing Weston's ability there, because... Um, I think you were, you were mentioning it too. He's one of the, obviously, you know, you have Ronaldo and company, but he's one of the top players right now for Juventus, you could argue. Yeah, yeah. And I think, like you said, Pat, with, with that host of talent around him, I think it's just, uh, you know, allowed him to be comfortable, be himself and be confident in his play. And yeah, he's just really raised his game, um, you know, that much further up. And 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 he's one of their their biggest, you know, offensive providers too. You know, he had a goal in this game, but he's he's regularly been uh, one of the people to, to supply chances and, um, you know, create create chances, uh, supply key passes to the offense. Um, so I think, you know, it, it's so funny seeing him come in. They thought of him as a defensive player, and now he's he's literally the one kind of leading Juventus's attack and, and giving them that spark, which is which is funny to me, but it's cool. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, you know, just to, to add a little bit more to, like you said, just – how he's able to um, really just, again, build on that, that experience again, where he was playing so many positions and how versatile he is and, and, you know, what he can offer to the team. I think it's just great to see him, um, you know, as, as Pirlo has kind of come in and, you know, molding his team here and um, obviously not performing the way they want to um, in Syria, but, you know, slowly closing the gap. And, and again, um, you know, you got Champions League here coming up and in the other, uh, you know, um, tournaments here in Italy, but, um, it's just great to see him adapt so well to Italian football so well and, and a new manager and, a, again, a club that's won it for so many years, um, you know, come in and just make a huge impact like that. I know I was personally nervous, um, you know, when I saw that game early on against Roma and he just looked behind and just kind of a few steps, at, you know, back. Um, nervous. Nervous, exactly. Scared. But, uh, yeah. you know, he's, he's, really, he's really rounded out and refined his game. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't agree more, Pat. And uh, that's why he won Player of the Year, too. So That's right. You know, there you go. He, he got rewarded, and, and hopefully, you know, there's several other Player of the Year awards and also team awards, you know, you know, club trophies coming his way, too. So I think with that, Pat, we're going to go over to Germany now and talk about Matt Hoppe. Um, so Matt uh, played in two games this week, or this week and, and I'll go with the first one, which happened midweek. And that was uh, against Colm. So Matt in this game played 90 minutes, scored another goal, and that was in a 2-1 loss to Colm. Um, so the goal came off of kind of a, a loose ball in the box that he capitalized on and uh, was able to just slot by the goalkeeper. Um, and, and, you know, that's his fifth goal uh, in all competitions this season and, and also just in 2021. So, Pat, do you know who that uh, brought him level on uh, for, for goals in 2021 in the, in the Bundesliga? I think I do, Austin. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's one of those, um, you know, pretty notorious Bayern Munich forwards there. That's that's right. You'd be correct, and that would be Robert Lewandowski. So, uh, yeah, a little, you know, you know, stat there, nugget bomb for you guys. But uh, yeah, Matt Hoppy's scored as many goals as Robert Lewandowski in 2021 in the Bundesliga. Take that company. So, yeah, yeah, right. Like great company to be in. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, but, but like I said, Pat, you know, Schalke ended up losing in this game and, and that was a big loss, Pat, to be honest, because 
because Colin are another team down there in the relegation positions that they're fighting with. Um, so yeah, losing three points to them was, was not a great, great result for them. And, and the goal came in the 90th minute too. So definitely, uh, yeah, definitely sucked, sucked for them on the day, but we move on to the weekend game. And, and obviously this game was a lot harder than, than a relegation battle. And that was because Schalke played Bayern Munich and uh, uh, Matt started in this game as well. He ended up playing only 72 minutes uh, and was subbed off kind of early, but uh, you know, this was in a four nil loss to Byron and, and Schalke really struggled to, to get anything going on the day. And, and the same could be said for Matt in this game too. Um, not too many moments of, of greatness, Pat, no, no goals, unfortunately, which, which broke his little streak that he had going, but uh, yeah, it was, it was disappointing, but I feel like we all uh, knew it probably wasn't going to go well for, for them on the day. Right. I mean, there's only so much one player can do, um, you know, for a team there. <laughs> Um, well, nice yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, all, all good things and, and the streaks must come to an end, but again, I'm sure we'll see Hoppy deliver. And again, a team like Bayern Munich, um, it, it's, it's going to be hard to come by for, for Schalke. And it, it's been, again, just awesome to, to see his growth and, and how well he's, he's adapted and, and, uh, you know, at least, um, you know, saw even in the tunnel, just, uh, you know, act, interacting with, uh, you know, Thomas there, Muller and, and some of the Bayern guys and, and just being on that stage, I think it's just great experience in the long run for him. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. You really can't put a, put a price on, on that type of experience for a player at that age. So yeah, yeah, that's, that's all cool. And uh, you know, I think the one thing before we move on that uh, I want to cover real quick is, is Schalke's current table position. So right now they're dead <laughs> last in the Bundesliga. And like we alluded to, you know, Colm was able to get three points on them. Um, and, and the other team, Mines, that, that sits now in 16th position, was able to beat Leipzig this weekend. So they were able to you know, climb three points higher in the table. So now that puts Schalke nine points behind um, Mines who are in that 16th position, uh, which, which means you know, they're, they're nine points back from the relegation playoff position. So it's looking more and more like, like relegation is, is going to happen for Schalke. So you know, we'll have to see what, what happens with Matt now, because if, if you didn't hear and if you didn't know, Matt's actually out of contract in June. So that that brings up the uh, a really interesting dilemma, Pat, of whether or not he should stay and resign or whether or not he should, you know, take the challenge on himself and, and bet on himself to, to go somewhere else and, and get the same playing time. So if I had to pitch it to you, Pat, what, what would you choose? It's so tough, Austin. Um Honestly, if I were if I were Matt and just uh, the situation in Schalke, I know isn't isn't a good one, but I can also kind of see the benefits of of you know staying at the club there. Um, but I think you have to think if you're re-signing, you want to make sure um, they're not going to turn into a handover situation. I know we talked about that off camera, where you're toiling in the Bundesliga or two Bundesliga struggling for for years and years. Um, you know, I think it has to be you know he has to look at you know, the whole situation and say, Hey, you know, is this a club that's going to be in the next year? Um, you know, or two at the, at the minimum, um, um, you know, being in a top spot to get into back to the Bundesliga, because, um, that would worry me a little bit, but, uh, but again, I think just the comfort of the club and, you know, how he's grown up, um, you know, moving to another, uh, Bundesliga team, um, again, um, could be a tricky situation depending on, um, you know, the, the players that they have in their systems and things like that, um, he'll have to kind of adapt to. So I think it's such a small sample size we've seen. And that's no knock on Matt. I think he's a fantastic player, but, um, and maybe this is a more conservative approach, but, you know, staying with the club like Schalke, I think, uh, um, could be, you know, possibly beneficial. And if he does well in the two Bundesliga and they're not getting up, maybe he'll, uh, you know, get some interest again. Yeah, that's that's a really interesting take. To be honest, I thought you were going to say he should he should move. So so now I'm, yeah, I'm interested. Take the flip side. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. I feel like we saw Sebastian Soto leave and and obviously he stayed until his contract ran down cuz he had that that extra year after he got his debut when they went down to the two Bundesliga and it didn't work out for him for for one reason or another. We really didn't hear what the reason was behind it that he didn't play. And it seemed just like the, the simple fact that he didn't re-sign with them uh, uh, when they wanted him to. So, yeah, I think, you know, with that, with that case study in mind, I, I think it's worked well for Sebastian to get out of that situation. 
obviously now he's with Norwich City, and it looks like he he'll have clearance to play in England this year. So I, I don't know. I think it's it's tough because Matt's been such a loyal supporter of Schalke since going there. You know, the fans are really behind him now because he's at least given some hope to them this year, uh, which has been a really tough year for them. So I know it's got to be tough on him to to want to you, you know put them through that that situation of him leaving after you know, they've put some trust in him. But if, if I'm being honest, I think he's got to kind of bet on himself and just, you know, if he's good enough, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll make it somewhere and, and he'll find another team uh, that can give him a chance to, to do what he's doing right now with Schalke. So I think I'm going to, I'm going to flip on you, Pat, and, and go the opposite way. <laughs> that's a good point. I know. I think that's a really good point, especially from that, uh, you know, that case study, obviously that was a you know, good example. I almost forgot about that with, with Soto. Um, but yeah, I mean, be kind of interesting to see Austin. I think uh, um, we'll have to see how the season goes again. I, you know, keeping my fingers crossed every time. I'm like, Shock has a game, but it looks like the gaps even further and further. So it's not looking too good. Yeah, yeah, it's bleak, Pat. It's bleak. Absolutely. So I guess uh, you know, with that, we'll move over to uh, you know some some exciting and interesting news. Obviously, not one of our, our typical uh, you know young yas here. Um, but again, an American abroad making a, a really exciting and interesting move that you know we wanted to cover for you guys. Um, you know, being a you know part of the, um, I guess you know kind of a need for for uh, you know strikers or attackers and forwards, excuse me, um, and want to at least cover this player. So that is uh, Jordan Morris here. Um, so obviously, I'm sure everyone's heard the news. Um, <laughs> an interesting deal to uh, you know Swansea where. It's structured as a six-month loan, Austin, with an option to buy at the end. Um, so although he won't be available for that, um, I think it's the FA Cup match coming up, um, you know, he will be eligible, um, and I think it's this coming Wednesday here um, against Brentford. So um, pretty quick move happens, I, I would say, pretty fast, and I didn't really see this coming at all, honestly, <laughs> in the last few weeks. Um, but, yeah, I mean, um, you know, want to kind of, you know, stop here and get your take on on that. Yeah, I really didn't think we'd see Jordan Morris leave MLS, uh, and especially not for a championship team. I, I felt like it was going to be a team either in the Premier League, if that was possible, um, or the Bundesliga. You know, there were some rumors out there, like Wolfsburg and Leverkusen supposedly put offers in for him. Um, but yeah, I really didn't expect this to happen, uh, especially right now, too, because, you know, you got COVID going on. Seattle just lost in the, the MLS Cup. And it's also, well, I guess we're still two years away from the World Cup, but um, right, right. It, it just seems like a weird time. Um, I, I do like the move personally, and I know we'll probably get into that a little bit more. But um, yeah, yeah, I think it's it's really interesting. I think that's the the only way I can approach it. No, I, I agree. You know, it is certainly interesting, and and just want to again, you know, read some some quotes that uh, Morris mentioned about the move, and, and you know, started with uh, obviously the manager expressing some interest and, and, you know, having some of those conversations and, um, you know, how he described the culture of the club and, and the passion, the atmosphere and, and what they're really, their game plan is and what they're trying to do, um, you know, getting uh, back up to the, the top flight there in the Premier League. So, um, you know, it's kind of interesting just because of, you know, where, where they are, um, you know, as they sit second, um, obviously Norwich is, is you know, pretty far ahead, but again, one of those two spots that are automatic promotion, um, you know, it is the third place, uh, you know, Brentford there. Um, you know, uh, pretty close as well, but they're in a right. pretty good position here um, as the uh, grueling championship uh, you know season goes on. And uh, I don't know. Yeah, I think it's just kind of interesting because um, it's not necessarily a um, you know locked starting role, but and I think uh, you know you can dive on it a little bit more um, in terms of the um, you know the plethora of attackers they have there at Swansea. But um, yeah, I mean. You have, uh, I think it's Jamal Lowe and, and Andre Ayu, um, and Ayu I know um, pretty well, and uh, the current starters there in uh, the three-five-two lineup, and both are having pretty productive seasons, as you can say, uh, second place in the in the championship. So um, you know, right. don't even fix what's you know sometimes not broke, but uh, again, <laughs> I mean, nonetheless, you know, with uh, you know crunch time coming here, cannot help. Uh, 
you know, couldn't hurt to have the attacking option of Jordan Morris and getting behind the lines. And, um, you know, obviously Swansea expressed some, some great interest there in the American ownership. So it's a lot of different factors that come into place here, Austin. And like you said, I'm interested. I'm intrigued. I think it's a, a good move. I wish I saw this maybe four years ago. Um, but I mean, <laughs> hey, <so> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey man. I mean, I guess a uh, move abroad is a move abroad. So yeah, I mean, that, that, those, those are my thoughts on it. Yeah, and it's funny you mentioned the 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 plethora of attack that they have. Um, you know, those those are two pretty good players that you mentioned. Uh, Jamal Lowe's worked his way up from some of the lower leagues, and and is really a great success story. And then you have Andre Ayew, who was a Premier League player for for multiple years. I think he was also on another club too uh, before going to shop. Uh, yeah, shop, somewhere in France, me. maybe. I thought it was France, or maybe that was his. Yeah, I want to say like Marseille, maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah, he also has his brother Jordan, who played at at Aston Villa. So, right. um, yeah, it's it's funny, but you know, I think he's gonna get playing time. Um, it's basically those two players and maybe one or two other attackers that are on their roster right now. So, you know, he's gonna be rotated in. Um, and we know the championship. The championship's got a lot of games in the season, so there's gonna be minutes to be had. Uh, the thing that really interests me about this move is just how his style fits into the game in England. Um, because, you know, when you think of Jordan Morris, you think of direct play, you think of someone who likes to get in behind the defense, um, you know, really take advantage of counterattacks, things like that. And I think that style really suits the English game. Um, you know, it's, it's not a move to Spain where, you know, they like to play their possession soccer or, uh, you know, a move to even the Bundesliga, which I think is more possession-based. Um, so, yeah, I think this is... This is a good league to, to go to. Uh, you know, I'm sure we'd like the, the Premier League, but uh, hopefully at the end of the season, that's that's where he ends up. Exactly, Austin. And, and just, uh, you know, my last you know few thoughts here on that, and, and you brought up an interesting kind of comparison, the way he plays. Um, kind of reminds me of, and, and man, I wish, I think the players, I'm forgetting his name now, but I think it's someone from, from Burnley or, or one of those clubs that, you know, has that kind of bigger guy, but just kind of subs in or, you know, sometimes starts too, but just somehow always gets clutch goals or just runs behind the lines, just bullies people over, um, but has that counterattacking ability to get, you know, behind and, and again, put the ball in the back of the net. So I think that, again, like you said, some of those, um, you know, clubs that when you're playing the Liverpools and, and Man City is where, um, you know, you have a few counterattacks springing or at the end of the game there. Um, I could see him being one of those those players there, um, to be honest, if they get up to the Premier League. Sarcastically, I was going to say Jamie Vardy, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I held off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, I feel like there's there's definitely someone who, who fits that mold in the Premier League. Um, but, yeah, I can't think of a name off the top of my head. But, yeah, I think I, I think it's good. You know, it's really cool to see him challenge himself. And I think this move really comes off of the pressure that all these European players, um, you know, American players playing in Europe, I should say, are, are putting on these MLS guys. Um, and, and again, I'm not someone who who thinks that MLS guys shouldn't be on a USMNT roster. You know, MLS is crap. I'm not one of those people. But I do think that the level of play is getting raised uh, pretty exponentially. You know, in, in the span of a season and a half, I'd say, Pat, we're, we're to the point now where we're struggling to – or, or not struggling, but we're really, um, you know, coming to see a lot of the European players make up a, a first choice roster for the USMNT. So I think Jordan's kind of feeling the heat a little bit um, and, and is really just, you know, taking that leap, which in the past, it didn't seem like he was interested in. So I think that's, that's progress. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think, um, again, like you said, just the, the level of competition, he, he wants to be involved and he knows uh, the impact he can make and, and he's done so many great things in MLS where it's, you know, time to, again, pretty, pretty safe, um, you know, but, but solid move because if things don't work out, you can go back to Seattle. But I, I think the expectation is things are going to go well. Seattle's going to get some, some good money back. Um, and then, uh, you know, he'll be on his way to the Premier League if everything goes well. So just really excited to see, um, you know, excited that he is, is open to that challenge there, um, you know, wants to be in that high pressure situation of getting to the Premier League. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't say anything more. So I think with that, we're going to move back to Germany and talk about Josh Sargent. So another American, you know, attacker, striker, um, and and what a good weekend Josh had. So 
Josh was called into action uh, in the 32nd minute in Bremen's game and came on, ended up scoring the last goal in their win, uh, their 4-1 win over Hertha. And Pat, what a great goal. Um, it really just came off of, of nothing. Uh, he, he just kind of, you know, picked up the ball in midfield, uh, set himself up and, and took a shot and it went in. Um, so the, the cool thing too about the shot was it had a 1% chance of going in uh, according wow. to the stats they have there in the Bundesliga. So, um, you know, Josh said, I'm not hearing any of that. And just to, you know, took a, took a shot and uh, yeah, it was, it, it paid off for him. So this was actually Josh's third goal on the season. So, you know, we've documented it throughout the season of, of ya that, uh, you know, he's struggling to score goals, but more on Bremen's fault, I would say. I don't think that's really, really Josh's fault. But, uh, you know, just to, to rehash on it a little bit, Pat, he's become such a complete striker this season, um, you know, minus the goals. So almost complete striker. Uh, but but all the other aspects of his game are, are really just coming along. You know, he's, he's really getting better at his hold up play. Um, he's finally increased his stamina, which was something that, you know, he struggled with that first season over there in Germany, um, you know, to, to become really a, a, a workmanlike player, um, a, a player that just consistently works throughout the game. Um, and and he's also, <laughs> yeah, right. And he's, he's also making really good runs uh, into the box too. Now, if his Bremen teammates would, would find him once in a while, I think that, you know, those runs would pay dividends, but uh, overall, I just, I still am really impressed by his improvement this season. Um, and and I, I'm just excited to see, you know, a full season where we have USMNT games. Um, he can get more confident. Uh, I feel like he's really found his groove in the Bundesliga. Um, you know, again, even though he's not scoring goals, I just think he's really comfortable because um, it took him a while to, to get that comfort level of the professional game. He was someone who came right, right. to Germany without playing any professional minutes before. So, um, it definitely took some time, but I feel like we haven't seen him in, well, actually over a year because he wasn't in that November camp. So, um, yeah, I just really want to see him back in the USMNT shirt. Yeah, as do I, Austin. And, and I think, uh, again, uh, you summed up really well. And, and he is, a, you know, he doesn't care about statistics, Austin. He is, he's going for goal there. So, um, absolutely love it. Um, but yeah, he, again, um, and some players, you know, adapt quick, some take some time and, and they, you know, build up here, uh, still such a young player who we keep mentioning. And, uh, again, I just feel like he's on, like you said, he's found his footing. I think Bremen are doing, you know, a little bit better, um, you know, season by season. And, uh, I think there's a, we, it's pretty close. I think I was just looking up the, uh, the table, I think 13th or 14th through 10th is like a one point difference. So oh, you know, okay. they, they could still, you know, get up to, to 10th or 9th there. Um, it's, it's pretty close. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I could kind of see if he, he's putting more of these performances together, um, a little bit more in the score sheet. But um, I wouldn't be surprised, um, and maybe this is a bold prediction, the next maybe, um, you know, two years um, if he goes to maybe, a, you know, a top six or top five uh, Bundesliga team. Um, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it's, it's funny you say that because I've been thinking about that a lot recently too. And I'm, I'm just trying to imagine that situation and what team would really be interested in bringing him in. And I can't really put a, put a finger on it. Um, you know, you got a lot of fun, exciting teams at the top of the Bundesliga and, you know, a team that just comes to my mind just because they've been really struggling to, to find someone that will, will step up in the absence of the striker they lost last year and that's Leipzig. You know, Leipzig bought uh, Slorath, um, you know, the Norwegian striker. They have Yusuf Polson, who I really like, but they don't seem to, to think that, you know, he's the, the right guy. Um, and the funny thing is, he's, he plays similar to Josh Sargent, too. So, you know, maybe he doesn't, he doesn't fit that system perfectly. But um, that, would, that would be a team that I feel like they would maybe be open to taking a chance on, on a player like Josh. Uh, just because they have the money, they have the the infrastructure around that team to to take a chance on them and um, you know really put faith in them to to come good and they've had a good track record so far so that'd be right. that'd be nice from our perspective I feel yeah and just quickly wanted to add too like like um, and again I'm not comparing it directly to to Wes McKinney but it just seems like yeah like you said someone to take a chance um, it doesn't have to be Juventus or anything but. Um, no. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. The Leipzig, uh, 
you know, thoughts there. That's intriguing. Um, but yeah, just, I, I think he has just the, the things that we've seen him improve on and, and the little things and, and just the, um, I don't know. It's like those, those intangible, you can't really teach, um, you know, some of the, um, the, the movement and just how he, he's able to, again, took him some, uh, some time, but just to, to adapt and, you know, really understand the game. Um, I, I think he just has the tools to, you know, like you said, where, where teammates will find him, he'll be in better, you know, attacking or offensive situations with more chances. I think he could really, um, you know, make a dent on, you know, not even goals, but assists um, and key passes yeah. there uh, more often on a, on a team that is able to, you know, really conjure up some, some, uh, you know, attacks. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the really cool thing uh, at the USMNT level. I think he's going to be a player that will love to come back and, and play with some of our other players in midfield. Um, and exchange from time to time, uh, which just opens up a whole nother dimension to our attack going forward. Um, so yeah, I can just imagine seeing him, you know, put a back heel in to Wes McKinney, who puts a little flick over to Christian Pulisic, who crosses the ball uh, into beautiful. the arena who's coming in. And, uh, yeah, it's just, it's really cool. So uh, I think, Pat, I'm going to throw it back to you for our last player today. That's right. And, um, you know, that is the player um, that I mentioned that is, is recalled to his parent club, Sebastian Soto. Um, so, again, um, you know, just kind of circling back, uh, he did sign with Norwich, um, you know, I think it was last July, um, you know, after that, that Hanover situation. I don't want to get into that. Um, but, uh, again, with the lack of work permit, um, you know, he was set out, sent out on loan there. And, and, again, I think that was good experience. Um, you know, we've seen a lot of Yaz at Telstar, our boy Andrea, um, you know, Kyle Scott and, and among others and, 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 you know, have some, some success there. So that was great to see him, um, uh, I think has seven, seven goals or so, um, you know, for that, that part of the season. But again, um, I, I think there's some other things going on with, with regulations and, um, the European union, you know, situation, things like that, where it's a little bit easier to acquire, um, for non EU players, um, you know, with those permits. So again, um, looks like it's trending in a positive direction. His his application and uh, you know going back to uh, in the the league championship uh, leaders right now um, ahead of Swansea. I think it's a pretty good situation. Um, so I know Austin, um, you know, I think it's an exciting time. Uh, just with, with Sebastian with the U.S., he saw him make an impact there uh, with Telstar. I think uh, everything's trending in the right direction after that that Hanover situation. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's really cool to see that they took the liberty of bringing him back mid-season. I feel like you don't see that often with with right. loans, and that gives me a lot of confidence that they actually think he's a player that can help their team. Um, it, and it sounds like he'll start off with the U23s there in England for at least the the first part of the spring here. But you know, if he scores the same way he was scoring over in uh, you know over in the Netherlands with Telstar, then I think he's going to throw himself you know at least into the ring of, um, or at least into the mind of Daniel Farka, their coach there. Um, and, and maybe that'll, that'll end up, you know, leading to uh, a championship debut um, or, you know, just a Norwich debut in general, maybe not even in the championship. Um, so, yeah, I, I like it. I think, it, again, it shows that he's wanted there. They believe in him. And, yeah, now it's on him to kind of just, you know, take that, that vote of confidence and run with it and, you uh, yeah, the future says. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, Austin. And, and and again, I know the coach, you know, said some positive things there, um, you know, about his play and, and his experience there um, for for country, and then even obviously with Telstar. So, yeah, it's it's a uh, just an exciting you know time and situation where um, you know obviously with the, the Morris situation, we'll see how it goes, and then with Swansea, but you know Soto here, um, you know all, you know everything going on, we might have some uh, some attackers here in, in the Premier League. Um, you know, uh, you know, joining Christian the gang. So I think uh, uh, it's just exciting time. Um, you know, see some of our forwards and attackers really, um, you know, seize and take their chances. Where you know that that's an area where we really need some some assistance and help. So I think uh, um, Sebastian just has those that knack for goal and that quality um, to put the ball in the back of the net and just be at the right place at the right time. And um, yeah, like you said, if he can develop and 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 really show himself, um, put a string of goals with the U23s, I, I don't see him. I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, you know, for a short time there, he's, he's already with the first team, um, you know, full-time. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't think so either. I think um, the way it's been going for our players recently, um, you know, we got to bet on them uh, because 
it, it just seems like all those bets are paying off. That's so, right. Put some money down. To, <laughs> yeah, right. I was saying uh, time to go to FanDuel earlier. Uh, <laughs> we were recording and, and parlay some of these uh, these uh, bets we're making here. You know, bets on right. the players. Go young, yas. Yeah, right. It's a great time to be a USMNT fan. So with that being said, Pat, now let's head over to Quick Kicks. Okay, guys. You know, it's about that time of the show. It's my favorite time. I think it's Austin's at this point. I keep saying that, and I really hope it's yours. Um, but you want to stay tuned here because it's none other than Quick Kicks. Let's see you could test Dwayne Miller. It's out to the over the wall. So to start quick kicks today, we have Tyler Adams, and Tyler started, played 77 minutes, and also scored his very first Bundesliga goal for Leipzig uh, in their unfortunate 3-2 loss to Mainz. So really cool to see Tyler on the score sheet. Um, played pretty well in this game too, um, but yeah, unfortunately they they didn't get the win. Bittersweet, Austin, but uh, you know, heading over to England here uh, with Chelsea and the FA Cup there. Uh, you know, Christian um, started the match and played 70 in a 3-1 win against uh, Luton. So, you know, great to see him get get the win again. Yeah, and going back to Germany, we have Gio Reyna. And uh, Gio subbed on and played the final 19 minutes for Dortmund in their unfortunate 4-2 loss to Gladbach. So, yeah, bad run of form for Dortmund. And, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what to say. It's just tough right now for them. That's tough, Austin. A lot to climb back in points in the Bundesliga. But, uh and having to Spain yeah. with Yunus Musa, um, you know, for uh, Valencia, you know, subbed on in the 59th minute in a 1-1 draw against Osasuna. And going over to England, we have another dual nat, or actually tri nat, Pat, and that would be uh, Falaren Balogun. So Falaren actually had a hat trick for Arsenal's U23s in their 5 0 win this week. So uh, big game, you know, big performance from him. And uh, yeah, it seems like he's really ready for, for that first team there at Arsenal. Wow. No, no big deal. Just a hattie. But uh, yeah, right. <laughs> and, uh, heading over to Spain, some some injury uh, you know updates here with Serginho Dest. He's finally recovering from that thigh injury. Um, he's back in the Barca squad. Um, he didn't play in their two 0 win, but it's just good to see him back. Um, you know, training and in the squad for the match. And going over to Austria, we have Brendan Aronson. So last week he made his uh, friendly debut for Salzburg, but this week he made his official debut for them, uh, coming on and playing the final twenty eight minutes in their two 0 win. So. Uh, Cool to see him, you know, officially debut for them and and get time with Jesse Marsh now to, uh, you know, progress and get better. That's awesome, Austin. And, uh, you know, back to Spain here um, with other Barca boy with Conrad De La Fuente. Um, so for the Copa del Rey here, um, you know, Conrad actually subbed on in the 101st minute there and a 2-0 win after extra time. So, you know, great to see him. I think he almost got a goal and, and you know, make an impact there with, you know, some of Barca's stars in the first team. <laughs> yeah, that's that's cool. And uh, going over to Germany, we have Julian Green, who started and played 71 minutes and also scored a goal for Greuther Firth in their 3-3 draw with Dusseldorf. So, uh, yeah, Julian's still having a great season. He's killing it over there, Austin. Um, it needs to be talked about yeah. more, you know. Um, but, sure. you know, heading over to uh, Belgium with Mark McKenzie, um, you know, that debut and, and a start, um, a crucial game against Stephen Horvath's uh, Bruges. Unfortunately, they lost 3-2, but again, he played the full 90 and looked like he had a pretty decent performance. Yeah, yeah, another debut and uh, another Philly guy. So, uh, yeah, cool to yeah. see. And now we have Nick Joachini, uh, who scored a goal midweek for Khan in their 3-1 uh, Coupe de France win. So cool to see that. And then this weekend, he started and played 71 minutes uh, in kind in cons, excuse me, two one loss to Rodez. Um, so, so good to see him back on the score sheet. And I think he missed a goal this weekend. Um, not missed, but, uh, got put off by mm -hmm. kind of like a late challenge. So, um, could have been on the score sheet again. Yeah. Nice to see him back on the score sheet though, Austin. And, uh, you know, heading over here to, uh, the you know, Netherlands with Luca de la Torre, um, you know, started and played the full 90 and a one nil win against Hernbeen. So, Again, you know, really putting on some good shifts there for uh, you know, Luca. And going over to South America and our one Brazilian yacht at the moment, and that would be Johnny Cardoso. So Johnny played the final 18 minutes of Internacional's 5-1 uh, win over Sao Paulo. So good to see him uh, get on the field. Awesome. And, uh, you know, going to Spain, talking a lot about Spain today. Um, you know, Shaq Moore 
in the second division there um, for Tenerife. He actually started and played 81 minutes, uh, but unfortunately they did lose 2-0. And going to Belgium, we have Chris Durkin, who started and played 90 minutes in St. Truden's 2-0 uh, loss. And uh, you know, back to Spain. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Oliva, um, there's a forward there, uh, grabbed a second goal um, of the season today or, uh, you know, for Atletico um, you know, uh, Madrid there, Juvenil A. So the 16-year-old striker ended up being the match winner too, Austin, a 1-0 win over the leaders, uh, Eche. So again, um, you know, nice to see Oliva putting in some great performances and a goal here. Yeah, yeah, he's one uh, to keep your eye on, kind of under the radar at the moment. And uh, going to England, we have another under-the-radar player, and that's Alex Mighton, who uh, subbed on and played the final 14 minutes in Nottingham Forest's 5-1 loss. So, uh, yeah, keep your eye on him, though. That's right. Can't lose sight. And, uh, you know, our boy here in Italy, uh, Andrea Novakovic, uh, started the match and played full 90 in a 1-1 draw uh, for Frosinone there. And our final player today, going back to England, we have Hassan Ayari, who made his uh, Sheffield United U23 debut and actually scored two goals. So uh, cool to see from Hassan. So that's all for episode today, guys. Make sure you like this video and make sure you subscribe to our channel down below. And don't forget to check out Instagram, Twitter, all that social media content, you know, we're providing for you guys, um, you know, with the goals and impact our yaws are having, it's endless content there. That's true. And our report's also available in podcast form. So check us out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. Yeah. So Austin, I mean, you know, great week, great episode discussion. We had some, some goals there. Um, McKinney continues to shine. We had Soto re recalled. Um, you know, Morris making a move. There's just, uh, you know, some some Philly Union boys over in, in Europe now. I mean, um, you know, couldn't be more happier with, you know, what's going on right now in the player pool. Yeah, right? In the middle of a pandemic. And, uh, you know, we're feeling this uh, this happy. Something must be wrong, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> must be wrong. But no, no, it's really, really a cool time to be, uh, you know, a fan of the USMNT. And, um, yeah, it's, it's cool to just have something that we can truly – have hope in because uh, we've been wanting hope for so long, Pat, so long. And, uh, you know, that all will lead up to one day winning the World Cup.